What is the name of your book? The name of it right now is Another Side of That War. Okay. Uh, I'm changing it to Combat Search and Rescue. And uh, trying to get a little bit, little bit more descriptive name on it. Can you tell me your name and spell your name for me and tell me your rank? Donald W. Dunaway. Okay. Donald is common spelling. Dunaway is D-U-N-A-W-A-Y. Okay. And you're looking right here. There we okay. go. Beautiful. And uh, what was your rank? Uh, I retired as a captain. Uh, went to uh, Southeast Asia in 1968. Got out in at the end of 1969, retired at the end of 1969. And uh, the, the 12 months I spent in the 602nd working with volunteers in a holy volunteer unit was the epitome of military service. You, it doesn't get any better than that. And uh, Can you tell me a little bit about that? I was in the uh, 602nd, what we call the Fighter Squadron Commando, which got changed to Special Operations Squadron when we moved from Udorn to NKP. We were flying, we were the only unit in Southeast Asia with the primary job of supporting the helicopter, Jolly Green helicopters in their rescue work. We were uh, A1s, uh, we, flew, uh, we flew escort for them to get them to the, to the scene of the rescue. We suppressed any opposition to the rescue and we We flew a uh, daisy chain around them while they were making the rescue. And uh, the most gratifying work I ever did in 20 years of, of Air Force time. Uh, the Jolly Greens were our sister unit, you might say, there at NKP. There were other uh, Jolly Green outfits throughout Southeast Asia, and no matter where they came from, you knew that who that the rescue helicopters were going to be manned by again volunteers. They were dedicated. They were they were dedicated. That's all you can call them. To they. Their, their motto was that uh, others may live. And uh, it's kind of like the motto of leave no man behind. Very, very gratifying work. It's, uh, there is none better. We, uh, we had some bad, uh, Rescues, we had some, the mostly, they were good ones. In uh, January of 1968, 69, I'm sorry, I had been over there about six months, and uh, we had a, uh, one of our, our assistant ops officer was shot down on another rescue and spent the night in the treetops and we got, uh, we, we planned on working his rescue at the same time they finished up the rescue that he was shot down on. But uh, we, we finished, we got down there on, on time uh, to be in place and uh, ready to go at the very first light. But, our, our uh, Sandy Two, our ops officer, was 
he was he he spent the night in the tree and we got to him this mo the next morning after the sun had burnt the clouds off his off his location and uh we we uh got started on his rescue about 9 or 9.30. And uh, we made, I don't know, multiple passes and taken hits on every pass. My wingman was either shot down or ran himself out of fuel. And uh, I, when that happened, I had to look in my cockpit to make sure I had what I had left to work with, and I had about 50 pounds of fuel, so I turned it over to the escort Sandys that were taking care of, that were escorting the Jollies. They finished up the rescue, or the, they finished taking care of uh, what we couldn't while we were there, and uh, When they got the rescue hel helicopter in there to pick up Sandy too, they the helicopter picked him up, picked up uh, the the survivor that had been in the woods, uh, the treetop all night, and as they were leaving, they were hit by 37 millimeter fire that took the leg off of, of a PJ and not, and they had to crash that crash land that helicopter and get it get the uh, the backup chopper in right behind his crash and he got the whole got everybody out of the uh, chopper that had been shot down the uh, The chopper that was shot down was it had a full crew, of course, and plus the survivor from the rescue to get, that he just completed, and they had he, the the pilot of the helicopter put it down in a control crash that uh, didn't. They were they were. Uh, not completely away from all the big guns, but far enough that they could get scoop, get in there and scoop everybody up and get out again. And uh, in the meantime, I was on my way back to NKP with hardly any fuel, 50 pounds. And uh, when I got back to NKP where I could see the runway and whatnot, I told them I had a fuel emergency didn't know how much I had because things saved 50, 50 gallons all the way home, or 50 pounds all the way home. And uh, you have to wonder if they have any accuracy at all at that level. But uh, the tower cleared me to land downwind, and I made a successful landing and turned around and went back to the disarm crew where I who were at the correct rollout end of the runway they, that they should have been on, and I, they told me then, the, the disarm crew, or the armament crew, told me that I had nine extra holes in my airplane from uh, small arms, uh, small arms resistance, I guess we call it. But uh, the guy that, shot down the rescue helicopter was certainly a bigger gun than I had been fighting. And uh, it was, but I, and I got, I got into the field, got my armament all cleaned up, got back to the uh, parking area, and just as I reached for the mixture control to shut the engine down, it quit. So that's as close a, as close as I have ever come to having to bail out.
uh, we didn't uh, we didn't have any uh, well but it turns out that I, I well, not when I got home that the rescue had been completed while I was on the way home and they were they were they were bringing the survivor to NKP uh, and uh, so he the, our assistant ops officer Pete Morris was shot down on the 18th 17th of uh, January and then he was shot down again the next day on the 18th and uh, we we like to think that that's a bad career track to follow is getting shot down and picked up. So at the, they had a rule in effect at the time that if you get shot down twice in combat, you don't have to fly any more combat, which is great. What else can I tell you? May I ask you a question? You may. You were talking about the pride of, of working in that specific area. If you were to give advice to some young man or woman today that wanted to go into the military or wanted to do something like you did, what would you tell them? I, w I would say that there is, there is nothing more gratifying than combat search and rescue. There are more a pleasant pursuits to follow, but none more gratifying. You, uh, you're you in a unit with all volunteers, and that in itself is a, a plus you can't exceed. And with that mission, that prospect, there just there is no higher calling than than combat search and rescue. And the way the PJs put it, and they are the, the PJs are something else. They uh, they say P that others you, may live. Can you tell me what a PJ is? A para pararescue jumper. He is the he is the undeniable king of the rescue force because he has dedicated his life to <laughs> that others may live. Now, may I ask you, now I want to know what it was like to fly a Sky Raider. Did you fly other planes? I have flown many other planes. Uh, F-101, F-102, ADC fighters, uh, T-33 trainers and the A-1 Sky Raider, although it was an archaic airframe, it was uh, devised and instituted just at the end of World War II and just before the Korean War, and it has built its reputation through the years after that. And it will not be exceeded as being a fighter, a, a war machine, a killing machine. Uh, it weighed 18,000 pounds without fuel or armament and weighed 36,000 pounds with fuel and its load of destruction. And uh, it, it was an honest airplane. It would do what you ask of it, and it was a it was a splendid machine to fly. It was a great, great airframe. Now, when we 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 got them when the Navy was through with them, and they had uh, phased them out of carrier duty. And uh, we got several of them uh, 
I guess all the Navy had, I don't know, but we, uh, we certainly did enjoy what they would do. They were not very fast, but they sure would slow. And that's what it took for the mission we put it to, which was combat search and rescue, suppression of, it, of resistance, or support of combats in, through, in uh, contact with the enemy. And they excelled at that. I heard that there was a party where they would throw a big party. If you could tell me a little bit about that. Yes. At the uh, NKP Officers Club, <clears throat> behind the main bar, sitting on top of the back bar, was a little doll that was patterned after the, jo the Jolly Green of vegetable garden fame. And he was holding a little chalkboard, a little, uh, looked like an old fashioned school slate. And they kept the, on there, they kept the number of rescues that the local uh, Jolly Green unit had recovered. Uh, one of the 40th uh, Air Rescue Squadrons. And um, when they had the survivor there, if he was in good enough shape, the air crews, Jolly Green and Fixed Wing, that had participated in his rescue, all of them, everybody was thrown over the bar bodily, and the survivor got to update the number to include himself. And uh, youthful exuberance being what it is, Sometimes one trip across the bar would not be would not be sufficient, so there would be other low altitude passes over the bar, and uh, the club officer. You have to imagine this or visualize it. He would. He was running around or grabbing perishables, trying to save them for the from the. Uh, invading Huns, and uh, at the end of his tour, I'm sure he knew that he too had served in a combat zone, because he uh, he su he suffered like the rest of us did. That is fantastic. Is there anything else that you would like to talk about? What was it? Was, was your son born while you were serving? No, uh, all of my children were on were born and uh, on site before the before I went overseas. Uh, the oldest boy was about eight. The daughter, youngest daughter, was about five or six. And uh, I still catch hell for volunteering to go, but I wouldn't do it any other way. How about your wife? Did she give you a hard time? Oh yes, still. And uh, I've come to live with it. Like any good husband, you just take the beating and keep moving. Yeah. Now, how long have you been married to your wife? Last July was 65 years. Working on 66 now. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, I thank you so much. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us about your experience? in that Sky Raider. I think I've covered it all. You are a great man. I really appreciate it, Doc. Hello, Sandy Seas, anyone? Go ahead. Are you with the Jollies this time? Uh, that's firm. Say again, Alpha? Understand you copy 82 Bravo? Jolly, hold your position. Hold your position. Hello, 82 Bravo. Hello, 82 Bravo. Sandy One, go ahead. Speak slower, A2 Bravo, speak slower, Sandy 1. Okay, where am I from you now? Where am I from you now? Say again, say again. Okay, I want you to go back with 3 and 4. Go back with 3 and 4. We'll call you to execute as soon as we find Bravo. Okay, we're going back with 3 and 4. Alamo 3, King 2, 7, A2 Bravo, Sandy 1, how do you read now?
You have in sight, have me in sight. Okay, I'm gonna fly down the river, down the river. Tell me when I'm over your location, over your location. A bit longer until uh, Alamo 2 gets in a little bit of shape.